Hello, I'm Hannah, and this is Hannah's Books. Anthony Trollope and I share a birthday, April the 24th. Although I remember seeing his name in the newspaper horoscope on that day, back when I was young and there was no internet, I had no idea who he was. Honestly, I didn't know about Trollope until about a decade ago. When I eventually got around to reading my first Trollope novel, I was hesitant to pick up one of his highly rated but very long novels like The Way We Live Now. And I also shied away from biting off the beginning of a whole series, like The Barsetshire Chronicles. When I stumbled across his novel Rachel Ray, I snatched it up. Although this novel is not as widely read as some of his other books, I found it to be a wonderful place to start, which Katie at Books and Things reminded me of in one of her recent videos. This book shows off many of the author's strengths, is shorter than many classic Trollope tomes, and is quite accessible. I thoroughly enjoyed the book and have found myself thinking about it quite a bit over the years since I read it. I should warn you of a couple of weaknesses. First, there's really no plot. Girl meets boy, they fall in love. Everybody thinks boy will be dishonorable and leave girl. He doesn't. Yep, that really is pretty much it. And you know it from the beginning. The second thing you should be aware of if you're new to the Victorians is that Trollope reflects many of the assumptions and prejudices of his time. Sometimes his portrayals of gender or race can be kind of off-putting. But that really isn't more true in this novel than in many others from the era. Rachel Ray herself is kind of a sap. Unlike some of the well-developed independent female characters in Victorian literature, like Jane Eyre or Dorothea Brooke, Rachel doesn't seem to have much of a spine or intellect of her own. But while Rachel may seem boring to the modern reader, Trollope's other characters don't. The author's strongest suit in this book is his painting of marvelous portraits. Some seem almost like caricatures, but they have just enough depth to make them feel real. These characters are complex, not simply good or bad, but instead both sympathetic at moments and irritating at others. We wind up loving them, warts and all, as if they were members of our own families. Rachel's mother is one of those women who cannot grow alone as standard trees, as Trollope says, and instead, quote, in their growth will bend and incline themselves toward some prop for their life. She is warm and loving, but easily persuaded by others. Her elder daughter, the widowed Mrs. Prime, is fierce and sharp, like her Calvinist friends, Mr. Prong and Miss Pucker, with their greedy, distasteful lives. Even their names show their personalities. The family's clergyman is Reverend Comfort, another perfect name, who wants to do what is right, but sometimes leads his flock astray. Rachel's love interest, Luke Rowan, is an outsider to the community, eager to exert his right to a place in the local brewery run by a man with the perfect brewer's name, Mr. Tappet. Thinking about Katie's newer video in Books and Things, I realized that Rachel Ray is right for a film adaptation. If you've read it, I'd love to know who you would cast for the various roles. Personally, I think Shirley Henderson would be perfect for Mrs. Prime. In addition to the character portraits and the author's wit, other reasons to read Rachel Ray are for its fascinating discussions of complicated and changing webs of authority how Rachel Ray chooses to submit to Luke, to her mother, and to her sister are clearly major plot lines. But issues of power and respect appear everywhere, between young and old, between men and women, between high church and evangelists, between Jews and Protestants, between workers and employers. Trollope was focusing on these questions of authority at a moment in history when the English-speaking world seemed to be turning upside down. Charles Darwin had just published The Origin of Species. The United States was becoming embroiled in the Civil War. The Industrial Revolution and mass production was reshaping the meaning of everything from labor to wealth. And the British Empire was coming to its peak. Suddenly, traditional interpretations of power and control were thrown to the wind. People found themselves at odds about how to go forward. 
These kinds of questions filled every relationship in this changing world. Perhaps the most fascinating thing about this novel has more to do with its production than the book itself. Trollope was originally hired by Good Words, an evangelical magazine, to write a novel for serialization in its pages. When the editor saw what Trollope was producing, a book that absolutely skewered evangelists as people who cared more for money than love, people with, quote, no warmth and little life, as the introduction to the Oxford World Classics edition says, he told Trollope that the pages of his evangelical paper were perhaps not the right place for his invective against evangelists. Surely Trollope did not think he would get away with it, but as it turned out, several chapters were set in type before Good Words pulled the novel. Of course, in our generation, the more famous Rachel Ray is this one, celebrity chef with her own televised cooking show, generally of quick and easy American fare. Just for a little fair play turnabout, here is a recipe for trolloped potatoes, an altered version of Rachel Ray's scalloped potatoes. First, gather your ingredients. Two cups of milk, one cup of broth, chicken or veggie, or water, one cup of brown ale, preferably from an English brewery, four cloves of garlic, salt and pepper to taste, three pounds of potatoes, sliced about a quarter of an inch thick, peeled or unpeeled for a more rustic look, three ounces of your favorite sharp English cheese, coarsely grated, about three quarters of a cup, one cup of heavy cream, and two tablespoons of a spicy English mustard. After you have your ingredients put together, preheat the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. In a large saucepan, combine milk and broth with garlic and half a teaspoon of salt. Add the potatoes and bring to a boil over medium-high heat, stirring to prevent the potatoes from sticking to the bottom of the pan. Add the beer and reduce the heat to medium. Simmer until the potatoes are tender but still slightly firm, about eight minutes. Remove the saucepan from the heat and, using a slotted spoon, transfer half the potatoes to a buttered 9 by 13 inch baking dish. Arrange the potatoes in an even layer. Sprinkle with half the cheese. Season with salt and pepper to taste. Repeat with the remaining potatoes and sprinkle with the remaining cheese. Whisk together the heavy cream and mustard, then pour the mixture evenly over the top. Bake the scalloped potatoes until golden and crisp on top, 40 to 45 minutes. Let stand for five minutes before serving. Enjoy with a good book. See you soon.